Thank you, Wen Sheng, for uh, uh, a reasonably upbeat view. The uh, importance of the housing market to China is overstated. Uh, there isn't an investment bubble. China could do with more investment, if anything. And uh, the decline in the trade surplus is a symptom of, a, of the beginning of a long-term trend towards more consumption. I'd like to uh, ask our, our, our people at the, uh, at the sharp end of the business whether this, this picture uh, that, that we've had uh, painted for us by our economists really fits with what they're seeing. Um, if we take uh, uh, the, the strength of the emerging markets, Fanny, can, can I ask you if, uh, if that fits with what your clients are seeing? They do business all over the world, um, not, not just in uh, sourcing uh, uh, raw materials and investment in raw materials, but also presumably in trade and in exporting. Are you seeing strong demand from other emerging markets around the world? Uh, we do see uh, more um, exports to emerging markets. Basically, um, uh, we, we see you know, uh, our clients uh, trying to take this strategy to balance off uh, some of the decline in exports to um, the States and Europe. So they try to explore some new markets uh, like the emerging market in, in Brazil and also in Asia, in like uh, Indonesia uh, and uh, some other new markets and even uh, in Japan, depending on what uh, they have previously uh, spent uh, their, their marketing resources in uh, and then they uh, tap on some of the uh, previous connection and then start exploring new markets. And of course, uh, people tend to move a lot more to the PLC domestic market as well. There's um, a major trend of uh, moving uh, to diversify their, export, uh, their markets, not just the exporting, but also the domestic consumption uh, in China is growing so strong, so they won't uh, give, a, give away this um, opportunity. Thank you. Professor Chan, does, does that fit with what you see? How, uh, how important uh, uh, are the other emerging markets for your electronics products compared to domestic demand within China? Well, I think uh, we operate in China in manufacturing. So we are facing, we, we are at the front of all the problems or all the goodies in, in China. But if you look at a lot of the numbers, the export figures in which the Asian countries, the business model depends on export. So if you do the calculation in terms of absolute terms from about middle of last year up to February, essentially it was flat for Hong Kong, Korea, Japan. Except for China, which is growing you know, steadily. Now it means the world demand on capital goods or consumer goods has not increased significantly for a period of six months. Now the only good signal is that it did not drop either. Now, because of the really poor uh, economic situation in the last quarter of 2008, so the rebound in October in 2009 is a Y on Y. So, I mean, your baseline is so poor, you're going to have an upswing. Now, but when you step to this, the first quarter, we did not see a huge increase. It's still the Y on Y effect. In fact, February, you see all the export from all the Asian countries drop because of the Chinese New Year effect. Now what happens is that a lot of this good from Korea, export, and Japan. So when the Chinese go on holidays, everybody suffers. And March, we see a resurgence of the, of the export figures, and particularly in China and Japan, everybody. Now, but then the, the question, is it a replenish of the depleted supply, line, uh, supply chain, or the real demand is there? Now, I think the US economy recovery will, be, will help now the trouble is, I think more countries will contribute more on domestic consumptions. That means local pro produced products. And whether this is going to help the uh, overall trading in the world, I, I don't know. I think European getting into difficulty is not going to help either. Now I think um, the China consumer um, and also emerging market, there's a shift of gravity of spending pattern from developed countries now gradually towards Asia. And, but one has to be careful. As a manufacturer and operation in China, a lot of the challenges are so real. Uh, number one, like the shortage of labor. Um, it was very bad in, in, the, in the first two months. I think all the 
factories in all over China suffer a labor loss of 20%. Now, it gradually replanted itself and eased off. But the trouble is it's not the number of labor. Now, the labor force is very mobile. That means you hire someone, you hire 100 girls or 100 workers this week, 40 will left next week. So the whole pattern of workers' mentality, working attitude has changed significantly over China. And we are worrying about, in the beginning of the first half of 2008, there was super high cost environment in China. You have raw material increasing, labor shortage, minimum wages, energy, and it's all reappearing now. So in, in southern China, we have two days of electricity stoppage, out of five, of seven days. And the disparity between the grid, how much you pay for, and you generate your own industry is about three to one. So as a manufacturer also operating in China, we are very careful about all the inflations, which of 3% in last quarters. So, and this will affect export. Already, um, we are talking to the officials, the government in Dongguan. They also have concern whether all this recovery is sustainable at the end of this year. Maybe there are some slowdown at the fourth quarter. Um, but you can see also the Chinese consumer are slowing down too. You look at the uh, World Expo. I mean, at first they expect all the Chinese will go there, 70 million. Now they estimate it may be only half will go. And uh, so that shows the inflations and all that are a concern to a lot of average daily life Chinese. But uh, the consumer will still spend. So it's still a good place to invest, to look for your market. Thank you. The rise of the, of the Chinese consumer, that, that's a very welcome trend in global terms. But of, of course, rising consumption is, is driven by rising incomes. And I wonder if that represents a problem for your industry, rising wage costs and whether China can maintain its competitiveness against other manufacturing bases Vietnam, Bangladesh, India, etc. Um, it's a huge concern. Look, look like Guangdong. The government announced that the minimum wage will increase by 20%, 19.7% in this month, in May. And already in eastern China, uh, they have 12% 12, 12 plus increase already. This will put a lot of strain on, on all the manufacturers, on, on any business. And um, so this will going to reduce the competitiveness of the Chinese export and also Chinese manufacturers. But I think the world at the moment cannot switch to India or what's being made in China overnight because the whole supply chain is so well established in China. If you export whatever component from China to India, it doesn't save you any money. Now long term wise, if you have a 20% increase in wages every year, we are heading for a huge trouble. So I think short term wise, China is still competitive, but um, there's a lot of change in terms of mentality, how we manage our uh, factories, and also more automations, less labor intensive. That is going to, to help long-term China competitiveness. I wonder, Wen Sheng, whether that fits with what you see. You, you, you spoke about a, a real exchange rate appreciation um, driven by a, a ri rising wages. Um, can China maintain its competitiveness in the face of this trend? Um, first of all, I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm a macroeconomist. Um, um, so I'm, I, uh, Professor Chan looks much, much better about the, about the industry. Uh, from the macro point of view, I would say that r rising wages is part of the process of adjustment in, in, in the economy. Um, and uh, and and it will help to 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 boost or support domestic consumption, right? because it helps to improve income distribution, uh, uh, you know, between between workers and and uh, and, uh, and return on capital. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, I you know we, we were in Shanghai and, and we met a, a group of uh, purchasing managers. And it was very interesting to to hear that you know, they uh, in mid May they 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 hold a, a trade fair. And the previous years, in terms of space allocation, exporters account for like um, 80, 90 percent of space. Importers only about 10, 20 percent. And this year, importers uh, the space account for half of the uh, 